Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let me just say good morning to all. It's another blessed day to be in the Lord and the land of the living. Even though there is a lot of turmoil, chaos, violence, and everything you can mention is still going on, but we are still alive. And that is a blessing from God. And we thank him for this day that he allowed us and give us the mind to come before his presence and worship, study, and give him praises, honor, and glory. So we will begin, we will proceed on. This little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, and I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, and I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, and I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All in my home, I'm going to let it shine. All in my home, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, and I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, and I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen, amen. It's good to let your light shine wherever you are. Let the world know that, yes, I am a child of God. He gave it to me because he died for me. And I'm going to let it shine, showing my appreciations to him. Let us know for our devotional scripture reading this morning. We're coming out of 2 Chronicles, this 10th chapter, verses uh, 1 through 6. And I'm having to read of the last few Sundays because. Our reader is still under the weather. And he's having trouble with his speaking. But we know God is able. And as we get in our lesson, we'll see he healed the man that was a demonic possessed. He can heal anything else. Our scripture is as follows. That's again, Second Chronicles, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 6. And it reads as follows. Now I call myself, beseech ye by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am based among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech ye that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some who think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not war after the flesh. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mightily through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Shall we pray? This morning, our kind, gracious, and heavenly Father. Father, we pause to say, Lord, we thank you, we worship, we adore, and we praise you. Father, we thank you for everything because when we try to count up our blessings, we will miss some of them because whatever our troubles are, our blessings always outnumber our troubles. And we thank you because that's a tribute to the goodness of you, your grace, your love, and your mercy. And there again, I thank you. Father, I ask you to touch the hearts and the minds of all the hearers, all the tenants this morning. Let something be said as we go out through this lesson and in the worship service that would uplift, inspire, and enlighten all who hears that may, they might say, oh, Lord, I want to get closer to you. Lord, I thank you for just being my deliverer. Oh, I thank you for being my God of all, as you are the one true God, the supreme God of all, who can do anything but fail. And Father, that is praiseworthy. And Father, we thank you in advance for answering this prayer, Lord, as we pray in the authoritative name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay. We are continuing our lesson study out of our summer quarter, and it is looking at Jesus called, or the call from the marginalized of society. And last week, our study looked at Jesus crossing social barriers to bring salvation to non-Jews through the testimony of a Sumerian woman and her powerful testimony that the entire town was saved. They came to see a man. And the conversation started with uh, Jesus going to the Jacob's well and him being all known, knew full well that she would be there and that she was a non-Jew and she was a Samaritan, but that didn't bother him because his mission was and still is that all be saved. And he met her there and started talking, began the conversation about a common commodity of water to where that she could relate to and after he got her attention focused on uh, that she got her on the same page that he was, she said, give me this living water. And then she did so, well, so I don't have to come back here anymore. But then he finally got her to the point, he is the living water. And that's what we all have to recognize, that when we drink of the living water that Jesus Christ is giving, uh, we won't have to thirst anymore, but we truly have a need for everyday water to drink. So my point to that, and I'm not trying to reteach that lesson, but um, I'm just trying to parlay on into today's lesson where he's uh, addressing another marginalized uh, of our society. He didn't shun away from the young man. He went to the young man or the young man saw him on a call and cried out to him. So uh, I, I, I missed my, didn't make my complete conversation on the woman came to the well, she is getting water and Jesus met her there. And through that, as I said earlier, she will say, the town can go save. And her powerful testimony was that said, come see a man who told me uh, everything that I had done and which he did. 
And when we go and have an encounter with Jesus, there is a life-changing encounter. And we're going to see now, I'm really going into the lesson today, uh, is a focus on Jesus delivering the outcast of society. He's addressing mental illness. So mental illness didn't just come about in our current modern day, but it's been here. And as we look in our lesson, it's coming out of Mark, the fifth chapter, and verses 1 through 13, and then 18 through 20 is our last one. But let me give you some overview of what was happening here, and we'll get into it in details of the lesson. And uh, he, mental illness was a serious problem then, just as it is today. But Jesus did something that so many of us uh, tend to shun. This young man was demonic, and I mean, he had many demons inside of him. That's why they call they said, gee, the lesson, main topic was Jesus overpower the legions because there were more than one demon in, uh, and had possessed this man. And our subtopic is was that one with the mental illness. And that's what he was addressing. Now, this man was not the only person that, Gima, that Jesus healed of his demonic possession because as we get into the lesson, we'll find that he healed somebody else. And I don't want to get ahead of it. Okay. So, and what I want to say here is that Jesus' actions of not shunning the young man and his demon possessed, because he will sometimes uh, be crazed and out of his mind, and that he, he, he was really... Uh, having meltdowns, and so that uh, far too many times today, our mental ill people will end up either dead for some reason or the other because there was a lack, I'll say, a lack of proper training or the resources to get these people the help that they need. So many, and I'm doing a research study at one time when I was working on my second master thesis, I was talking about the disabled and in our society and how uh, they lack the necessary resources to get them the help that they need. And I know in this state that we used to have a mental facility and people were, uh, they would be there to be treated for their mental illness. And I can um, um, without the numbers in front of me, that some many was helped, they became for they could return to society. And if they stayed on their medicine, well, well, some government official decided, well, that was spending too much money. I want to ask that government official, aren't these Jesus is great? Aren't these people just like you and I? What if it was you? Wouldn't you want to be able to have the that get the proper treatment that you need so you can live a normal life. So many of people in our society this day is walking around. They don't first don't have the money to get the medicine they need. The parents, they, they're treating it and taking care of a mental ill person. Sometimes it's over their head. They love them, but they, 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 are, they, are, they, they they're just more than they can handle. And I, I, I still, it bothers me that several instances in our city where the young man had a mental episode and he was shot dead because I guess you say that it was the police is improperly trained to really calm him down so they could get him, arrest him and take him to, a, uh, to the mental part of the hospital to get him some help. And then there was another one was just walking down the street, had no business with a gun in the first place, just shooting up people. So many people lost their lives and was in. These are the kinds of things that we are currently witnessing in our society because of mental illness. And I'll say this, uh, that when Hillary was running for president, she addressed the need 
for adequate mental facilities and to non and to reframe or stop stigmatizing mental illness. And we'll see in this lesson, Jesus did not stigmatize this young man. And when he came and to Jesus cried out, Jesus didn't tell him, get away from me, you psychopath, or any other word. He went to him and he addressed his mental illness. Okay, so what are my aims today, now that I gave you all of that, is I want us to compare and contrast the, um, the symptoms of and consequences of mental illness with those we, that experienced it by the man in our lesson. Well, good morning, how, how are you this morning? And, uh, and to how we are addressing it in our society today. I don't know the state of medicine back in those days, but I can know that we have the medical uh, uh, facility and resources to really treat mental illness. And I'll say once again, we need to reestablish and reopen um, our mental illness facilities. So those people who are suffering mental illness can go there and get the proper treatment that they need. And hopefully depending on the stage of it or what it is, they can be cured. Now, Jesus healed this man. And he didn't, again, he didn't stigmatize him. He didn't ridicule him. And he didn't do any of that. He showed love and compassion for this young man. When I mean, he was possessed, I'll say again, by more than one demon. That's why they used the term legions, because there were many of them. So uh, in the scripture, it's talked to them, calls them demons or unclean spirit. Uh, that they have, some of them have many malicious intent. Okay. Let me make this little note. Just as God's angels exist for good, the demons exist for evil because they're controlled by Mr. Satan. And we see these in the spirit today. Now, let's just look at Ezekiel 28, 15, when I, when I'm, as I'm going through trying to get, I'm going to get to our lesson points. Yeah, Ezekiel 28, 15 says this, you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. So what he's saying is the prophet Ezekiel is saying, you were born without any mental condition. Now that's what he's saying. But up on when you got in, however, we had to having a mental problem and wickednesses came upon you. Well, let's say, let me say this, and I'm not trying to contradict the scripture either. I'm just trying to point out some of the, uh, this is, um, an illness that we see sometimes our babies are born with. A sound, Down syndrome is not a mental illness either. And if a person is, is kind of slow or they use the word cognitively impaired, that's not a mental illness. They just, their little brain just process stuff a little slower than a normal person. And I'm gonna ask, they are still God's creation. And, just, and we are to love them just as much if we have a child who was born normal, okay? Now, let me say this. Some people, when you are born normal and they are being taught the word of God, now, let me say this, God, Satan is always busy because he's on a mission to destroy God's people and, the, and our walk and intimate relationship with God. So if we are not careful or we're not surrounding these little babies with the word and the blood of Jesus, 
Satan will creep in and cause them to start doing some evil things in their little lives and see they, they see what they they are practice or uh, try and emulate what they see grown-ups doing in society. Let me just make this reference point. I was listening the other night to the state of the county uh, address by Warren Evans, the county exec, and he was talking about the deplorable condition that our young people is having to live in because they have ran afoul of the law and a lot of them have some illnesses that they shouldn't have and have still being subjugated to not being able to get the proper treatment that they should have and be in a safe environment. And I said, what is happening to our world? What is happening to our town? Why, 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 why? And it just really unnerved me because I have a soft spot in my heart for our young people, whether they committed a crime or they did some, uh, and I, that's a crime as, as a young, they, they well, they, it is what it is. But, uh, and they, well, I'll say this way, when they got outside of our society's laws, and it, it, to me, this is my opinion now, and I, I feel that somewhere we in camps is not nurturing and teaching and loving those kids, our babies, as they should, and teaching them uh, the ways of God. Somewhere that has fallen by the wayside. Now, and I'm not so crazy that I think everybody is going to walk in that walk. I'm not, because Jesus, God knows itself that all of, he wants everybody to be saved and be in holy union with him, but he knows this full well that so many is going to reject him. But to me, and this is me now, that seems as though there has been an increase in juvenile delinquencies from when I was growing up. And, and many of you on here will have that same idea. We were born back in the 40s and 50s and now that, that when those parents took to heart their responsibility. Okay, now let me kind of get to where I want to get to. And our lesson. Uh, well, I got another scripture to talk about. We're talking about this demon. It's, 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 it's let loose. And that's Revelation, the 12th verse, chapter, verse 9. And it speaks of the great dragon, who is the devil. When he was thrown down out of heaven, because he wanted to be more powerful than God himself. And God told him, no, he wouldn't. But he was, uh, he is the deceiver of the world. And his, he had, a, he brought a third of the kingdom with him. And his angels, that's why it says angels came with him. And they are busy trying to destroy God's people. And any time, and it, it hurts me when you pick up or listen to the news and so many of our young people are being killed or, I mean, it's just, it just mind boggling. And I said, he is, he is rampant. He ramped up his attacks on humanity and even on God's people who are believers. He, and, but now, even at that, and scripture don't lie, his days are numbered. And I'll say this, he knows that because he has increased his attacks on God's people. And anytime you can just do drive-by shooting for no apparent reason, that has to be a work of a demonic mind <laughs> or create a person that's evil and, and wicked to the core. Why I say this? Because his mind has been is being controlled by Satan. There is no good in Satan. Search the scripture. Uh, how would somebody just want to kill an innocent child? Why would somebody in his right mind take an innocent baby and throw him through a plate of glass? Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Okay, now. Can you see me, Miss White? Yeah, I see the top of your head there. I know it. I don't know what's wrong with this thing. Uh, well, have you turned it off? 
and turn it all the way back in and restart. Yeah, yep, yeah, twice. You know what? Uh, the last time I was at the women's auxiliary meeting, they had the same trouble. Mm. You might have to call your supplier and ask him, you got to be at that. Because somewhere I think maybe there is a data backup in the lines and it's not filtering through. Mm. Yeah. Do you do a, a scan your computer every once in a while? No, I don't know how. Oh, you got to have a... <laughs> You gotta have a, a, a malware security thing on there. We'll 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 talk about that a little after service. Can you? Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. See if you have one. If not, uh, cause I use the web route and I have it set to scan, uh, every other day, every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So these people is going crazy with this malware and hacking into. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, good. That's All why right. I, don't, I don't do nothing because I don't know what I'm doing. I might do the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, anyway, okay. back to service. Uh, okay. Let's just go into verses 1 through 5. Speaks to the demonic and desolation of the man that Jesus encountered. Like I say again, he was, the, he was possessed of not just one demon, but several of them. And the verse says this, and they came over to the other side of the sea in the country of the Gardenians. And when he was come out of the ship, he, Jesus, come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. Now, who had his dwelling place among the tomb and no man could bind him, not with change, uh, because he had been often bound with feathers and chain, and the chain had been just plucked up, bro broke a piece by the, by the demonic possessed man, and the feathers was broken into pieces. No man could tame him. And always at night and day, he was in the mountain and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself with the stone. Well, we, that tells us the magnitude of this man's condition. He, he was going those fits of rages and he couldn't be bound with the change or nothing else. And who had his his home in the tombs and up in the mountain. And he would go have those faiths that he would be self-mutilating. And he was living isolated because his mind had really completely gone off, off the rail. I use that term. And that's why they said he was desolate. He's all out there by himself. He found companion in the graves and in the mountain. He didn't want to be in the company of other people. And uh, he was in such a bad state. But I tell you uh, that he was, he was just totally out of control. And, but what, had, what happened, Jesus and his disciples was on their way and they saw this man. And when the man saw Jesus and then all of his, let me find, he cried out for help. And he had been crying out for help when he was in the, in the graves and in the mountains, self-mutilating, cutting himself with stones. That is how warped his mind had become. And see, the, these Satan uh, will cause you to do some, some weird things abnormal stuff and it make you think it's normal. It really, he really will. Um, but Jesus being God and his compassion and he's calling, we're still talking about a summer quarter subject of Jesus calling the marginalized. If he was marginalized, tell me who was. Mm. Who was who would want to be living in the graveyard? And nobody that I think in they sound mine. Mm -mm. Who would want to be living up in the mountains? I would question that. Because where are you going to get your food from? All of these things and your water, living in the mountains, you know. So uh, let me say this. If we don't keep an intimate relationship with God. Satan is going to make his way into my, our minds and hearts. 
and make us think that it is just okay to live that way. And, I, and I'll say this. I was been reading and I'm talking about this homosexuality and this one doctor out in California and he says that is a mental illness for them people who practice that to think that is it is okay it is okay to fall in love with somebody of your same sex when the bible clearly speaks of it and I think they had banned him one time for speaking that out I said that goes to Shoshana in that warpness. <laughs> and now I see mm -hmm. you in his mm -hmm. so very clearly. He just started to stop dancing. <laughs> yep, for a minute. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in verses 6 through 13, it talks about Jesus delivering this man out of his mental state of illness. And it says, but when he saw Jesus afar off, ran and worshiped him. The moment I say that in that moment, he had a relapse of normalcy. And he said, and he cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee? Now these, 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 these demons are speaking because they know Jesus is more powerful than them. And he, they, were, they was doomed to get killed. And so the man said, why are I the judging by the God? that thou torment me not. And that, when I was reading that scripture, I said, that speaks to some like the society today. People will want to kill or maim or hurt somebody else, but when it comes to their time to suffer their rightful punishment, they do not want to do it. Mm -mm. So the, the demons had the, tormented this poor man to no end. But when they saw Jesus, they recognized who he was. And he said, I don't want you to torment me. Now listen here. He said, but Jesus cast him out told him, said, listen, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is that name? What's your name? And he said, my name is Legion, because there were plenty of them in this, in this man. And listen, then here in verse 10, the demons is asking for mercy from God, who Jesus is. And he besought him much that he would not send him away and out of the country. And they don't want to go. But now the verse is said, but there were a mountain of a great herd of swine feeding. And there were Jesus granted they would so they wouldn't go into nobody else. Okay, look at how much for God is. And he said, and all of the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. They is pleading for mercy. Now, I, I, I didn't do all of my background reading to find out history, find out how long they had tormented this poor man to the point that he was cutting himself with stones. Mm -hmm. But now, when they have encountered Jesus, they are pleading for mercy. Well, rather than have them go into somebody else, Jesus' mercy had them to go into the swine where the swines ran down the hill and killed themselves. Well, mm -hmm. now listen, Jesus is after saving souls, okay? You can raise them or pigs <laughs> or hogs, that's what that is. So, uh, they did that. And it, and Sister said it was about 2,000 of them. That mm. many? That was a lot. Uh, and they were choked in the sea. They, now, listen, say here. But the man, and I said, when he had come back for a momentarily back to Nonsense, he saw Jesus and he fell down and worshiped him. Okay. <sighs> It answers the question, when we call on Jesus, we are assured of Jesus as the, the delivering us, okay? They recognize who Jesus was and acknowledge him as the son of the most high God. And like I said earlier, they pleaded for mercy. Jesus gave them their mercy, but they was destroyed. 
because they didn't have a soul in the first place. He was concerned about healing this man physically and spiritually because he healed his soul. And now listen here. The man had a desire and a destiny. He went and he came and he, he followed Jesus. He became a follower of Christ from then on. Once he was delivered out of his demonic state of mind. This is a repetitive statement. Jesus wants our soul. He healed many during his earthly visit, stay on earth, in order to heal their soul. If we can go back to the, the woman at the well, he crossed barriers to heal souls. Today, he's dealing with an illness, a physical illness. It's mental in order to heal souls. And there's other scriptures that he healed the physical in order to heal the sick, the soul. Mm -hmm. He's doing the same thing today as he is doing back then. His mission is to eradicate sin out of the world. That was his mission. That's why he went to the cross. But we have to believe him. And I'm, I'm, I I'm, took to heart when the man saw Jesus coming. The demons had him to recognize who Jesus was, gave him his honor of praise. He said, from the most high God. And he fell down and worshiped Jesus. And, I, and this is not a negative statement, but it's just a question. How many of us is willing to worship Jesus regardless of our condition? How many do we take the time and say, in spite of, I'm going to worship the Lord? And I've heard of situations, and I'm kind of dealing with one today, that the sickness is causing them to stand away and not worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's that's a that's a hard thing, but it is happening. Yeah. So, uh, but we still have to. Re and I know. Let me say this: I encourage us all to remember who Jesus is. He is the healer. He he works through doctors. Even if you're going to your doctor, don't forget Jesus. Do not turn away from him. You know, and, and I've seen that so many other times. And then I question God, why are you allowing this to happen to me? There's a lesson in it. He might want to draw you closer to him. He knows about our faith more than we know, you know. But, and I learned to ask, why not me? And teach me the lesson that I'm supposed to learn and draw me closer to you. Okay. Let me say this. Moral sin and sinners will be punished. But when we go and accept Jesus and walk with him and establish that intimate relationship with him, God will take care of us. And I go back, I don't want to find out this, this man who was demon possessed. And when Jesus healed him, he came back to worship him and followed Jesus as a thanksgiving, an uh, expression of gratitude for what Jesus done to him, done for him. And we are finding so many in the scripture that where Jesus healed during his earthly visit, and he set a uh, tone for what uh, set an example on how we are as Christians should do. Okay, and let me say about our homeless people just a minute, and then I'm gonna keep on going. Is that many in society shun them, 
that's been stigmatized as if just like uh, mental illness is stigmatized, you know, uh, but it should not be. You don't know what their situation is or how they got there or nothing. But if we can provide some kind of resources and help for them to move them out of that situation, uh, that's, that's a good thing. We are emulating Christ and his care for everybody. And what I am glad to see is this, is that there has been an apartment building set up, renovated to, and for each person, they go into that and they are being given skills and they have a completely furnished apartment with food and furniture and everything. But some had some mental illness, and that was part of another study that I was doing. But they have to address that too. They can't just address one part and not the other part. And even in our jails, there's so many that's in the prison system is suffering from some form of mental illness. And the, the penal system have already acknowledged that we are not equipped to handle mental illness and a lot of he said a lot of them uh, is in there and he almost i think he said either half of his pop the population had some or suffering from some form of mental illness that should be addressed and i said earlier i think maybe just before you got on that our governor former governor decided we didn't need those facilities we need them yeah. and we need them more than ever now Amen. But this is how we are marginalizing and stigmatizing people with mental illness as if they are a throwaway of society. That should not be. Mm -hmm. That should not be. They all need to have as much care as possible. Okay. Now let me say this. And I know you may have, some may have already heard this. That old Northville site, they're gonna take that and renovate it to housing instead of re renovating that place to rehouse and it holds our mental illnesses in our society. Did they rehouse it to the general public? Yes, ma'am. It's terrible. It really is. And I said, this is where our priorities are. We don't care about it, it's too expensive to renovate it for the rehouse it, to reopen it and renovate that place for the house those people and give them the facility where they can be and have some kind of decency of life. But they rather put houses on. It don't cost that much to renovate for housing, but it costs too much to renovate and reestablish it for the mental ill. I mean, uh, that, that it really, it angered me because it shows where our priorities is. And what in this is that what you do for the least of these, you're doing it to who? To the Lord. And what you don't do is still doing it to Him. So I know I said once before, America got a lot of sins they need to repent for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, my last few uh, verses I want to make mention of. When Jesus, the manic man, had a desire and a destiny, he wanted to be healed and he wanted to follow Jesus. Because so this is what he did. He, listen, Jesus told the man this, go into your home country to their friends and tell them what the Lord has done to you and has compassion on you. So, the man was obedient. He went to his home country and went to testifying and testimony, having his testifying of the man that he had encountered that healed him of his demonic condition. And he went on to tell his story. And then he began to follow Jesus. And I'll say this. I haven't read anywhere that and a person have an encounter with Jesus. 
they walk away the same. Yeah. They walk yeah. away the same. Okay. If what happened, the townspeople, and I'll make a comparison here between this lesson and last week. The townspeople saw this man and was marveled. They was amazed at the change had occurred in this man. And last week's lesson, when the woman at the well, when Jesus got through telling her about herself, she ran back to the town and told him, I want you to come see this man that I just done told me all about myself. Mm -hmm. And I want you to come see him. And what happened? The town went and they believed on Jesus. This, it doesn't tell me that the whole town that he witnessed to, but he believed and he began to follow Jesus. And I'll say this, what a change. And I'm getting ready to close and got some questions or comments about this lesson. Feel free to ask me. Now you made some very good points. I mean, people see them, but they don't acknowledge them. No, That's they don't. They really don't. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. They're too stigmatized. And we have, and many of our Christian folks, sisters and brothers, have this cultural Christianity that when a person look a little different, come in our church, we shun them. And we had a lesson, Sunday school lesson, that one that have the good clothes, you sit up above here. He's in what's come like the scrubs on, you sit over there, stigmatizing and being cultured. I don't want you sitting next to me. And that and that's not who we are. That's we are not following Christ's example at all. No. Mm -hmm. Not at all. What if he'd have had if he would have stigmatized this man? Or what if he'd have stigmatized uh the man who was blind or the one that couldn't walk? You know, what would he what had he done that for? But he didn't come here to, he would, if he had, he wouldn't have been God. He wouldn't have been loving all of us whom they created. And everybody is created by God. And we are created the same. He loved us all the same. Yep, we all his people. We all his people. We either going to acknowledge him. That's what we have to understand. We all his people. Right. Absolutely. I'll say this. I got a, an email from Rashida to lead representative. Mm -hmm. You know, her heritage from over there in Iraq, in Iran, and the, you know, and she was upset because they might have made a disparaging remark to her. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, I sympathize with you, but Black folks have had been suffering uh, discri racial discrimination ever since we got here. And still are. And I said, we still are. I said, we've even had a black president and we still being discriminated and having disparaging remarks uh, said to us. I said, no, we can't give up. We can't back down. I understand what you're saying. And then I asked, I said, do these people know the history of the Palestinian and the Israelites? Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay. For the black folks to have to be stigmatized, marginalized, and discriminated against. But when it happened to any other nationality, all the world just go crazy. That's a real big deal. It, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I wanted her to understand where I, where I was coming from, even though I don't condone them talking about her nationality and that in a negative tone. Mm -mm. But this, let, I let her know it's real. It's real with it's us and the Jews, you know. And all the others. That's right. Okay. And any other comments? Well, let me say this. Racism is a big deal. We, we should all, we all God's people. Mental illness is a big deal. We all God's people. Homelessness is a big deal. We all God's people. Homosexuality is a big deal. We all God's people. I don't I don't condone the sin at all. And but I don't hate the person. Because to me, I've always felt like this doctor, them folk got a mental problem. 
<laughs> and I and I just still have a problem with we as Christians having hate in our hearts, especially, especially when it's whites against blacks mm -hmm. or the other, because I didn't I have not read anywhere in scripture where Jesus said, I'm here for the only the Jews. I'm here only for the white folks because he didn't create but one race of people. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't. And I'm only here for the rich. But scripture tells us all against all of those things. It's he, all the human, human race. He's all the one the human race. Mm -hmm. And he, you see, we studying from and said he's calling them marginalized. And he tells them those rich folks got us. A snowball's chance of getting into heaven. Yeah, she sure said it. <laughs> because they're worshiping their money and their wealth. And he's going to be first in your life, whether he takes his position or you just go on and give it to him. You know, me, myself, I'd rather give it to him. So let me say this. Mental illness is our, was our subject focus today. And we as individuals and churches must step up our game to address it the best that we can. And if we have people in our congregation that specializes in mental illness, have a, a, a session on it. I even have to take part of Sunday school to talk about it. It's a subject that has to be addressed and should be addressed. Mm -hmm. And not when somebody come in our church who uh, I've seen this happen. Who has, uh, is a little off, and you look at them like they're a piece of dirt. We had a person like that at our church. Our pastor stood. I mean, he he brought it to the congregations. The man is here for a reason. He's just like you. Exactly. You need, you need help. I need help. He need help. Mm -hmm. and it all comes from the Lord. Exactly, exactly. Well, I think Pastor King did the same thing because him being old there in the neighborhood saw him and got to know him. And he he was some days he would come in and sit down and worship. Others he'd come in and just want to walk. It's, it's just going. He's you know, but mm -hmm. you know, he, he would tell the time, leave him alone. Something going to rub off on him. Mm -hmm. And and I can equate that to this: when you have an encounter with Jesus. There's that a change. There is a change. Yes, indeed. And uh, we who are in our right mind, we will heal from our sinfulness before we became saved. And we are all just saved sinners by God's grace. So who am I to look down on somebody else? Who had who needs a healer? Who am I? My job is to keep on witnessing Christ. Somebody gonna hear it. Yeah. Somebody is going to hear it. Okay. Any other questions or comments? No. Well, let us close with prayer. This morning, this morning, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for raising awareness of the, some of the mental illnesses that's taking place not only in Jesus's day, but in our day. And Father, give us the mind and the heart to address it as Jesus did. We may can't cast out demons, but we can provide the resources or nothing more than a referral and assistance to the parents. And that so they can get help for the person who is suffering from mental illness. And Father, we just thank you for being a loving God who loved us all the same. And Father, instill in us that kind of love that we will not stigmatize or shun those persons, but uh, give them all the love and care that we can. And Father, I thank you in advance for answering this prayer. As it prayed in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen.